In this video, we'll take a look at how you can add parent guardian emails through Google Classroom. So to begin with, you're going to want to open up your Google Classroom, so classroom.google.com, and you were asked to create a class for your homeroom. So I'm going to ask you to open up your class that is your homeroom, and I'm going to open up this demo example. When you have the class open, the first thing we want to check, and we need some people to make sure they do this, we're going to go up to the settings up in the corner. And so if I click the settings up in the corner, down on the bottom it says Guardian Summaries, and by default this is turned off. And we want to click on this so it slides over to turn on. You do get a pop-up here that says Add Class to Guardian Email Summaries, and also it says Add All the Classes You Teach to Guardian Email Summaries. Now, in my case, I'm going to take this off because I don't want to do that for all my classes. But in most cases, you're probably going to want to leave that checked. And then you're going to do Add Class, and this will be turned on. Without turning this on, you can invite parents and guardians, but they can't actually see anything until you turn this part on. So I'm going to get out of the class settings now and come up to the top where it says People. And where you see people, you should see all of the students in your homeroom. You may notice that some of the students actually have a parent guardians listed on here, while some say invite guardians. That's because some of the emails have already been added. Thanks to John Jones, he added all of the seventh grade students already. Now what's cool about this and why we're doing it in homeroom is that once an email has been added for a student, it adds it for all the classes. So that means if you have a sixth grader in your homeroom and you add the parent guardian email, every teacher will then see that email for that student or that parent guardian. And once they've turned on that summary, like we just showed in the settings, that will automatically go out to parents if they've signed up for, to receive the summary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this invite guardians for one of my students. So I'm going to click on that, and then I'm going to type in the email for that particular student. Now, in your case, and I'm not going to demonstrate this part of it, you are actually going to go out to Skyward and find that email and copy and paste it in. Once you have the email entered, you simply click the Invite button on the bottom. Now, this will automatically send out an invitation to the parent. So we're going to try to time this and actually send out instructions to the parents too so they know why they're getting this particular email. If by chance a student may have more than one parent guardian, so you get a contact that um, they, you, another parent would like to be added, or let's say that down the road a parent changes their email, you can simply go in and change that. If you go to the three dots over on the side, you have the opportunity to email students or guardians from here but you can also invite more guardians or remove guardians. So let's say, for example, a parent asked to be removed, you could take them off here, or if you needed to invite another parent for that particular student, you could simply type in that address. Based on what I'm seeing here, if there was a change in email, you wouldn't actually be able to edit in here. If I try to click in here, it doesn't let me type. So what I would need to do if someone told me that they had changed their email, as I would need to remove that guardian and then invite them using their new email address, and that would send them a new invitation. So that you know what this looks like from the parent perspective, I'm going to go to my email that I entered and see that I have an invitation. And it says that I have been invited as a guardian in Google Classroom, and do I want to accept this? Now, notice you don't need a Gmail or Google account to accept this. All right, what? There's a little bit of a misconception from some of the parents and maybe even some of the teachers is that they're actually joining Google Classroom, and that's not the case. What they're doing is receiving a summary of what's happening in Google Classroom. We really don't want parents in our Google Classroom, and that's because we want our students' work and not our parents' work. So if they want to see something specific in Google Classroom, then they should ask their own son or daughter to log into Google Classroom and take a look at it that way, not actually having a parent to log in. For this, I'm going to choose Accept so that you can see what happens in this particular case. So then it says that I've been invited to get email summaries, and I'm going to accept that. And here's where I get a choice. I can choose the weekly summary 
or I can choose daily or no summary. So I'm going to choose the daily. I think that's going to be in a parent's best interest if they really want to know what's going on in the class. And then we have no control over when the summaries are being sent out. So it says here they're sent out each afternoon and weekly summaries are sent out on Friday afternoons. And in some cases those might be later in the afternoon. What we've found out that if it's coming later in the day and you really want, parents want to receive it earlier in the day, they can fudge on what time zone they're in and so they could actually change their time zone to receive it earlier in the day. So for example, if it's coming in at 6 p.m. and they wanted it to come in more like right after school, they could adjust their time zone by a couple of hours. So that's really all there is on the parent side for setting this up and then they're going to receive those emails. So from their perspective, what we're going to do to instruct them is that if they want to check grades, they should still be looking at Skyward. That's also going to tell them missing assignments. We are also going to be putting homework hotline on. So if they want to know specific for homework, they can be checking homework hotline. And then if they want to know what's happening in classes, they can be using the Google Classroom. So this would be a good way to have conversation starters with students to see, hey, I see you're reading this book or you're working on this in this particular class. And this Google Classroom allows them to have those conversations. And what's different than Homework Hotline is that Homework Hotline, they're going to have to go out to the website and seek that out. Whereas this is going to come right to them, so it makes it a little easier that they can just open it up, take a glance at what happened during the day or during the week, and then spark some conversations with their students. If you have any questions on this, please don't hesitate to ask.